Hello and welcome to Hoffman Photography. My name is Rainer, I'm a photographer and photo instructor. In today's video we'll talk about photography and baking. Yes, I know that's a strange combo, but please stay tuned. Have you ever wondered what photography and baking have in common? Exactly, very little. Perhaps nothing at all. But since great grandma's time, baking goes something like this. Take 150 grams of flour, three eggs, 100 grams of sugar, a pinch of baking soda, and mix everything until it's a smooth dough. Then put it in the oven for 20 minutes at 200 degrees. If you follow the recipe, success is pretty much guaranteed. The cake will always turn out perfectly. But what about photography? Some participants in our beginner photography courses expect us to give them recipes like those in Mary Berry's baking Bible. Take a full frame camera, a 50mm lens, 1 125th of a second, f8, ISO 200. Press the shutter release button. That's all you need and you get the perfect photo every time. Some book authors have recognized what amateur photographers really want. A quick and probably incomplete search on Amazon yielded the following results. The cocktail photography cookbook. The boudoir photography cookbook, 60 recipes for tempting photos. The lighting cookbook, foolproof recipes for perfect photographs. And photography cookbook, 52 photographic recipes. Photography by recipe. Is it really that simple? Well, I believe photographers should know the basics. Shutter speed, aperture, ISO number, depth of field and so on. And they should train their perception. They should analyze the pictures of other photographers and painters to understand why a picture does or does not have visual impact. Actually, I believe that photography has more to do with cooking than with baking. When you are baking a cake, everything is stirred together according to the recipe and then you hope that something edible will come out of the oven eventually. When you are cooking, on the other hand, the quantities vary, different seasonings are added, cooking times are adjusted as needed and so on. Depending on your personal taste, the quality of the ingredients and a bit of chance, the meals turn out differently every time. And maybe that's a good thing in photography too. If we all would just follow photographic recipes, our pictures would all look the same. And that would be quite boring, I think. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.